A very warm welcome to this, the first film in our Structural Members series. It examines the notion of load-bearing in architecture. Objects have been falling to the ground when dropped ever since the Earth was formed. It wasn't until the 17th century, however, that mathematician and physicist Sir Isaac Newton first explained why. Legend has it that in the year 1665 or thereabouts, he was hit by a falling apple as he sat under an apple tree. Twenty years and many hours of reflection later, this experience led to Newton's law of gravitation, which explains the phenomenon of mass attraction. Here on Earth, this means that, unless prevented from doing so, all bodies fall towards the centre of the Earth. For architecture, this means that the various components of a building have a natural inclination to collapse and that they may, in some cases, need to be prevented from doing so, as in this building. The idea that architects design buildings and engineers calculate structural loads is a division of labour that cannot apply to supporting structures. They too must be designed, and if architecture is the synthesis of structure and form, then architects clearly have a role to play. Kurt Ziegel was one of the first to provide students with a clear explanation of load-bearing, and so enable them to work together with engineers to develop optimum designs. Incidentally, Ziegel studied both architecture and civil engineering in Dresden. My brother and I were taught structural design by Franz Krauss, a pupil of Kurt Ziegel. Krauss stands alongside other celebrated architects and engineers, such as Stefan Polonyi, Frei Otto and Heino Engel, who built on Ziegel's approach and continued to teach architects the complexities of load-bearing behaviour. They developed numerous methods of categorising load-bearing systems without ever settling on a universally accepted classification. The load-bearing structure refers to the structural members of a building that transfer loads. It was Franz Krauss who first conceived of a load-bearing structure as a system for transporting loads. Think back to an occasion when you helped someone move house. You carried bulky items with other people, lighter ones on your own. Some of them were easier to take hold of than others. And once you were laden down with heavy boxes, you were no doubt keen to find the shortest path from A to B rather than a circuitous route. Summary Just as objects are drawn towards the centre of the earth, so are buildings and their components. In construction, this is known as the transfer of loads, and for it to work properly, buildings need a load-bearing structure that is designed by architects and engineers together. Please take a look at the second film in our Structural Members series. In it, we will have a look at how loads are classified.